morning, Nath. Morning, Trev. How you doing, alright? I'm alright, you alright? Not too bad, yeah, not too bad. Back out? Yeah. Back onto the moors? Bit of Dartmoor, bit of a, you know, Sunday afternoon, stroke morning, stroke... Yeah, it's morning. Well, at the moment, it's still morning. Well, I just wanted to make it sound a bit casual, a bit laid back. It's a bit more casual right. today, isn't it? We ain't got all our camping gear, we're not camping today. We bought cameras today, haven't we? DSLRs. Yeah, I bought myself a new um, Nikon. It's not all singing or dancing, it's not a full frame. It's even, not even the top of the range of the DX format. It's not even the most recent model of this model, but it's better than the one that I was using. So we're just gonna have a dick about. Yeah, have a dick what around with the cameras and moorland. Moorland, a bit of strolling. Go and see some stone circles. We're at Gidley today. Gidley. A new area we've not been to. Gonna take in Kestor Rock, Stone Circles, Gidley Tour. So you must be telling them about way in the hell, isn't it? Oh, better set me a few range going. What do I need to do? I need to set on my GPS. What was it? Nothing. Got some on my chin? No, I said I've got no beard. Oh, Nate's got no beard. It's better to be honest, Nate. It was a shit beard, wasn't it? It was a shit beard. It just looked a bit like a dirty old biker. The look I was going for. Yeah, right. So judgment. <laughs> I hate You look better without it. Cheers, mate. Saying. Thanks, yeah. Sorry, I'm a little sensitive about my hair. Anyway, this is Gidley. This is Dartmoor. Welcome to Summit or Nothing. It's a beautiful day today, out in the moor, it's a bit nippy, colder than I was anticipating. If I had the camera on in my house this morning when Trev turned up, it would have seen me foolishly removing the gloves from my backpack. I've got my sleeves undone, covering my fingers up as best I can. We're going to try and do some photography, which requires a lot of fiddly work with buttons on the camera, so that's probably going to be quite painful. Uh, I'm guessing we'll man up to it in a minute, but we've sort of come come onto the moor. Trev's bought a map of a walk that he's printed off, and uh, we can sort of pretty much see a rough outline of the circular walk of where we're going. It's not a massive walk, but we're gonna sort of try and make it a bit more fun. Obviously, getting the cameras out and that, so it should be good. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy joining us, and uh, we'll see what happens. It's an absolutely beautiful area. So as soon as you walk through that gate, you're just sort of up in the open. We're heading down towards the Stone Circle, which is the uh, Score Hill Stone Circle. Very cold today, very cold. I cannot feel my fingers. over in the distance there. Again, we can see Steeperton. We're the opposite side of Steeperton than we usually come. And there's the stone circles. Obviously now not all the stones are standing, but it's funny how like they're mainly in clusters of three that are still standing. Whether that is how they was originally set out. Lovely vast area. Man, 
around here. See for miles, even down in this dip, you know. So I've been reading some books lately on composition and getting a bit more up on photography. I'm trying to sort of uh... slowly start to apply some of the sort of rules of composition to the photos that I'm taking. Yeah, I bought a Nikon D5300. I was using a Nikon D3100 before, which I've had for about four years. It's gone from 14 to 24 megapixels. Just generally a better camera. It's not a huge step up, but it is a step up. I bought an entry level camera to see if I'd get into it, and I'm still into it after four years, so I thought I'd spend a bit more money. I think I deduced that that was Watton Tour up there behind me. Still many tours, many areas to have a look at here, haven't we? And then Kestel Rock over there, standing proudly. It's going to be like the, one of the final places we go today on our circular. It's looking amazing here today. It's like sunny, but you've got these dark clouds. So the sky is dark and moody. But the moorland is gold and crisp. It's just real contrast in images. So uh, yeah, beautiful area. Whether this skylight is making it seem all the more impressive, I like it. little bridge and a stream here and I'm sure there are some wonderful little photographic opportunities here. What I have been looking at is where you can slow the motion of water down by using a long exposure. So I just took my camera out briefly and uh, even on its smallest aperture setting I can't can slow down uh, the shutter speed enough and still retain a decent exposure to get the shot. I think the solution is neutral density filters so I might have to look at investing in some of them when I'm not spending quite so much money on uh, replacing my toilet. I always feel when I'm looking at these routes and you look at the heights and oh, it's, it's only 400 odd metres, it's not a lot and you're thinking is this going to be an impressive walk today? So far, we haven't really been let down in this year. Beautiful area, bit of climbing, not too strenuous, and it's dry. Might be a bit parky, but I don't mind it cold as long as it's dry. It's when it's cold and wet, I can't avoid it. corner there, just the edge of that. the trees, Castor Rock in the background there, we'll be getting over to that soon. So now we're leaving Battlevy Corner to head up here, see some more stone roads. as well but I can't be bothered to get out of back. I should have a look really. I've got a half decent camera I need to use it. But I'm all about the filming. Somewhere up here there's uh, three standing boys so 
for much nest stones. Unless there's just three boys standing up there, but I shouldn't have thought so. Three boys standing stones. Yeah, up here, south from where we are. Beautiful area again. Look at it. There's fern with a forest over there where we've been before. So we're still up on the North Moor at the moment. We'll show you at the end when we cross off the squares we've done. Uh, it's not a huge walk today, but hopefully we'll still cross off a few squares. I think this is long stone down here. Another standing stone. as well like in a bit yeah what's that that is uh sound tour fernworthy tour yeah do that yeah yeah and then we could go over to that one and then over to kestel do some tour bagging tour bagging right. show us show us so fernworthy tour middle tour that one kestel so we're following the route, all my print out, but we're uh, just going off a bit, haven't we? Ad libbing. Ad libbing, yeah. It's any joys? Nothing here, is there? Oh, I've got my map, got my map caught on me. Tripod. Oh, I strained myself trying to reach around. Hang on. Knife. Oh, it's alright. <laughs> Well, we can't seem to find the three standing boys. We're looking, but in a minute we're going to cut across to go up to that tour over there. Um, one thing I can tell you is a little bit of information about the uh, Longstone. The Longstone is the fourth tallest standing stone on Dartmoor. It's 3.1 metres tall. Was it the Beard Down Man we went to see, wasn't it? That was quite a tall standing stone up at Devil's Tour, I think it was. over there is one of the peakery high points I can't remember what it was called it was the one with the standing stone didn't feel so high when we were there but when you look at it from here yeah it's quite a tall it's taller than any point around here by the looks of it yeah sorry peakery hey up this David Bailey stopped balancing stone so this is firm of it all we looked up at this we come before amazing
I'm going to switch over from the 35mm Prime to my 1855 kit lens. So we're going to set it to 18mm, focus on something about 6 foot away, f22, adjust the shutter speed accordingly, and then see what kind of a shot that gives us. Well, we lucked out today with the weather for a change. That's what it's about, Nath. Oh boy! Oh boy! Ready? So it or nothing! Nath's just going to do a portrait of me. What was you saying, Nath, about monogrammatic backgrounds? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 35mm prime lens, which is essentially a uh, portrait lens. And I'm going to take a portrait of Trevor on a really wide aperture, and I'm going to isolate him against a monochromatic background of the blue sky, which is going to give great contrast into the image. Whether it actually comes out and is any good, I mean, is it only as good as the subject? <laughs> Cheeky. Just take my hood off for you. Put your lens on. Shh. He's got his lens cap on. <laughs> I would have noticed in a second, wouldn't I? <laughs> you done one? Too much shade on your face because you can't let the camera on. The air's coming out, hang on then. <laughs> Might be into modelling. It's a bit weird having your photo taken that close, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not a posy sort of person. He'll pay me for this. <laughs> He's ugly. I reckon that's quite a good shot. He's got good isolation against the background. That's what my teachers said. I've got good isolation against my background. <laughs> So that was Fernwithy uh, Tour, overlooking Fernwithy Reservoir and Fernwithy Forest. I wonder where it got its name. It was um, Thornworthy Tour. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, it wasn't Fernwithy Tour at all, it was Thornworthy. What a beautiful day to be out on the tours. The sky is amazing today. The colours are so vibrant. Ooh, I love a vibrant colour. framing so guys third hike of the year is it or third or fourth hike with me uh low alpine alpine ascent really enjoying the pack still comfortable but it is uh one issue that seems to be reoccurring with it at the minute and that is the fact that where it doesn't have the ventilation on the back after we come back from the breckens it was clear that there had been quite a lot of sweat forming at the base of my back because uh i had quite the outcrop of spots even at this time of year, January, February, you know, my back's warm enough to generate enough sweat to uh, cause spots. So that's something that's probably only going to get worse as the weather improves. So uh, I'll keep you posted as the year progresses. Yeah, getting into more boggy territory now. We've both uh, lost a foot. <laughs> Hopefully we'll find somewhere to get over there to the middle tour. Bit of fox spawn. 
but that was probably how come we saw that frog up on the top of Corn Ridge. Coming over. Ish. Yeah, we've uh, walked ourselves into a bog here. I was only thinking, sort of 10 minutes ago, how God, it's not been that boggy today. bit there sort of stood on it and you can see the ground all around you shaking oh, it's getting worse again hopefully there's a nice path between there and Castor it seems to be there's people people walking over there god that was dodgy through there it's a bit, a bit frightening in places, actually. Yeah, there must have been a track somewhere. We've got to learn to start using tracks more, haven't we? Yeah. In Dartmoor. Because it's all fun, you get a bit get your foot wet uh, but you know you could get stuck in there or... it really felt unstable in there didn't it like the whole ground could open up Nothing. <laughs> Doesn't have quite the same ring, does it? Hey, what's the matter with you? Something or nothing? What do you for it? Fair old jant from the uh, the end, but all in all, today's been a really enjoyable sort of get out and sort of have a stroll. I think sometimes you can put too much pressure on yourself by setting unrealistic goals. When we went to the Breckens, it wasn't necessarily that we had an unrealistic goal distance-wise, but I think in those weather conditions and uh, coming back after Christmas, being a, both of us being a little bit out of shape, getting back in the mountains. I think maybe it was unrealistic to expect to find somewhere where we could camp out, you know? So I think 
there's definitely a lesson to be learned about having a much more relaxed and enjoyable time when out on the moors or on the mountains to setting yourself realistic targets, you know? If you just want to go out and walk, that's great. But if you want to sort of relax, take in a bit of scenery, maybe practice a bit of photography like we have been today, then you've got to pick a route that allows you a bit of time, you know, and set off in good time to be able to achieve it. So, uh, you know, Nafe's observation of the day. Maybe. I don't know. I shouldn't do those. I'm rambling again. Trev's going to love editing this. Anyway, cheers then. So that was middle tour, and now we're going up to Kestor. Certainly has been a smashing day for this. Have it dry and clear. I can see more than 10 foot in front of us. It's nice to be back on Dartmoor and uh, appreciate the weather. What a beautiful tour. It's another base in there. Yeah, it's a bit busy up here today, isn't it? So, Kestor Rock. I think it's higher there, isn't it? Yeah. Let's have a look. It's been enjoyable, isn't it, Nate? That's have summited. That's have summited. So nothing. I'm not going to shout when there's people around. Ruins their day, isn't it? It doesn't add to it being better, that's for sure. No. <laughs> so, this is where our walk was started. Over there somewhere. Come out of them trees, I think, somewhere along there. To get back, we've got to go that way and in through the forest there. We're moving away now, Nate, aren't we? We cast all rock. Yes, yes we are. Yeah, we got up there with the uh, intention of doing the summit or nothing, and then uh, it became really popular, all of really populated, oh. overpopulated. Yeah. Well, I've been quite impressed with today, Nate, for the uh, views and that. And it's a nice area, isn't it? Mate, oh, you know what? It's been a really nice day. I've enjoyed the relaxed pace. I've enjoyed getting out with my new camera and trying to put some of the new knowledge that I've acquired into practice. Bit of banter, bit of company, bit of being back in the mall, keeping in shape. Yeah, and the sun's been out. It's getting a bit cloudier now. It's been a oh. bit bitter, but a bit of wind and a bit of coldness compared to the rain and the, you know, the storms we've been out the last couple of times, I'll put up with that all f***ing day. Yeah. I was just commenting to Nafe how weird it is. It's, we're going past these rocks here. They're not really on the map. They haven't got a name. I mean, we've been to real insignificant pieces of granite, which have been named as tours. Oh yeah, it's funny why this hasn't been. We're just going over across this road, and there's something called the Round Pound, which uh, looks like a load of stones making a little round wall. So I'd imagine someone kept cattle in it or something. I don't know. Anyone know about the Round Pound? Leave a comment below, let us know. Just saves me typing it into Google. Well, oh. what's this all about then, Nafe? Like yeah, it is. I think it's something for livestock. Well, that's what I was wondering. 
a bit heavy duty though, isn't it? Yeah, you wouldn't, there's no gate. Once you got it in, how'd you get it out? But the thing is, is you think back to when this was in use, much harsher winters, maybe it's literally just weather protection for livestock over winter. Could be. Who knows? down here and I think that's where we have to turn off on this corner on the road through Goodley Wood yeah they built a bridge across there we probably would have struggled <laughs> quite nice about these like pre done walks that you find on these guide books and stuff is the fact that quite often there's the contrast between open moorland and a bit of woodland and sort of you know it's not just the barren sort of expanse yeah. of Dartmoor. Christ how many years of rambling would it take to find this <laughs> and it is beautiful like you know you've got the blustery cold bleakness of the moor and then you've got this like close intense sort of stillness of uh, the woodland, like, you know? It is still in here, isn't it? We're still in here. We're still in here. We're still in here. Kidley Tours around here, somewhere. Some Dartmoor legends. It was World War II. It's not that old a legend. Two soldiers posted on Gidley Tour, keeping watch. They could hear from a distance the hooves of a pony galloping up to them. They listened out. As these hooves got closer and closer and closer until eventually they seemed to pass from a seed. But there was no pony. It was not the best story, but they basically heard a pony run past but didn't see one. A ghost pony. Ooh. Here we come up to Kidley Tour now. Kidley Tour. There we are. Up. Last up of this trip, isn't it? Yeah. We've done Kestor. We did Tour. This Thornbury four. Tour. And Kidley Tour. Kidley Tour. Yeah, it's a little hut there. I see that. Yeah. We're going to have a look yeah. in that in a minute. Stop it! I'm losing it with the summit on my friends. I can't seem to bang it out like I used to. Age, mate. This Kestor. It's quite a way away. He's gone in. Hopefully it's not like Narnia or something. I'll get over it and he's completely disappeared. 
There he is. Uh, Pretty, isn't it? Yeah, I was using natural framing. Natural framing. What, to get take a picture of that rock? Yeah. It's all very well finding the frame, but you've got to find the frame with the view, innit? If you stand in it. There's natural framing, look at that. That is hay tool, isn't it? There's hay tool over there. I don't think you'd be able to see that from here. It's impressive, standing on his own up there as well. been on the road it has been constant uphill to get back to the car feeling it now in the back of my calves every corner you get man you think oh, this must be it the car must be it but no here we go back to the car that was a climb wasn't it, wasn't it? steady yeah oh. enjoyed it though yeah. yeah it's a good day oh yeah here we are Back to the car, back to normality. Life. Life. Get my trainers on. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that I've got something way more comfortable than boots, which is boots <laughs> to put on afterwards. Right, let's have a look. It's 11.5 kilometres. No, that's like almost bang on seven miles, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Well, six miles is 10k, and 1500 metres is a metric mile, isn't it? So. Trev just agrees because his way of doing maths is agreeing with the person that's telling him the answer. I told you that. He did tell me that, yeah. <laughs> you might notice that in our videos when he's working out distances and pacing and I go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he goes, oh no, that's wrong. And I go, mm, yeah, no, that's, yeah, oh yeah, that'd be cool. That's what I do. Gidley, 4th of February, 11.5 kilometres. So, not too bad, was it? Yeah, yeah, that was a good time. Thanks ever so much for watching. Yeah, we'd like you to please like, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already. We're nice. going to do a handshake. Yeah. <laughs> nice.